Hi everyone, my name is Davika and I am your Techie Tantrika. Hi everyone, I hope you're having an amazing week. And this week I've decided to talk about something that I consider a pretty serious matter because it's something that I feel affects us all. The view of sex and intimacy in our society really needs a lot of work. And I say this because of many reasons, of course. I have a lot of fellow tantric practitioners and tantric coaches who do this work without being able to put their name to it. I also know a lot of sex toy bloggers and sex positive bloggers, practitioners, coaches who really just can't even put their face to the work because once you do that, you've completely changed what you're able to do in terms of being employed, uh, where you can be employed, uh, how you're viewed by your social circle, etc., etc. And it really has me thinking a lot because I'm like, wondering why is there such a big stigma attached to sex and intimacy when it's something we all do. I'm not going to chastise somebody for eating or going to the washroom, like we all need to do all these things and sure of course we don't need to all have sex, that's fine, you know, some people will decide not to and that's perfectly fine as it is, but I would say the majority of us are either self-pleasuring or having sex. So why is it that that and also pleasure, just the concept of pleasure, enjoying things in our life, is always tied to something as guilty or bad or something that we can't trust ourselves with regardless of what religion you're associated with or spiritual belief or if you're an atheist it doesn't matter what it just seems that in this culture that we live in there's this just horrible attachment with sex to like a whole string of horrible things like it's sinful it's addictive it's this it's that it's like all these things that makes us seem like we can't control ourselves. Things that we find very arousing, we think of as dirty. Like, why? Why are these things so bad? Why do these things have to be considered horrible in some way or like have some sort of like attachment to it where it's like, oh, you're enjoying yourself, but you should also feel guilty about it. I really wanted to bring awareness to this belief. This mindset actually stems into a lot of negative behavior. You know, like if you think about it, you know, people are always like, oh, if I enjoy this, I might want to just do it too often or something. It's like, no, have you ever realized that when you have something in front of you and nobody's telling you you can't do it or that you aren't allowed to have it or whatever, you're allowing yourself at that point to self-monitor and get a good understanding as to whether or not you actually want the thing in front of you. For example, um, if you're coming from a culture, you know, like, that says you're allowed to socially have wine when you're a teenager. You know, like there's not a lot of stigma around having a glass of wine, you know, at dinner or something like that. And maybe your parents allowed you to have it when you were 16 or whatever, if you wanted it. What are the odds that somebody is able to do that is necessarily going to always overindulge in that? So do you see what I'm saying here? Same thing, you know, as a person growing up in a sex positive family, for example, or a family that encourages you to have an open conversation about sex and intimacy. If you have questions and you're able to speak to parents or guardians about this stuff, what were they telling you? Of course, eventually you're going to do this, just be safe, or the, you really understand what you're getting yourself into before you do it. Or were you brought up in a situation where people were just saying, we're not going to talk about this, this is bad, but yet you're here, <laughs> you know, like, so either way, regardless of how horrible sex may or may not be, you're here. Clearly, somebody had to have sex to have you here. I want to get a conversation going about this because with this message comes great hope and possibilities of lowering the chances of getting STDs because people then become more responsible, I think, of protecting themselves and getting to understand the people that they're with, whether it's on a short-term basis or a long-term basis. I just feel like when people have less shame around this, they make better decisions and take better care of themselves. Regardless of you know, what you've grown up with or how you feel about your own sexual self and your own pleasure and your own concept of intimacy, the one takeaway I really want to bring about in this video is the importance of vetting the people that you have sex with. There is a middle path. There's no concept, as far as I'm concerned, of if you don't have sex, you're, you know, you're pure and you're whatever, and if you do have sex, you're bad. Like, there's actually a middle path in between all of this, where it's like, 
If you want to have sex, have sex. Just make sure you owe it to yourself to have great sex. Part of that is about getting to know the person in front of you. Like even if you meet somebody in a bar or a club, what's the harm in getting their information and going out and meeting each other for a coffee or whatever and talking about it first? doesn't mean that you have to have it lead into a relationship if you don't want that or if they don't want that. But at least get to know the person in front of you and understand that they're a responsible person. Get a feel for how your energy vibes with them, what your instincts are telling you, because your instincts will never guide you wrong. The worst circumstances I've been in and the worst circumstances I've ever seen other people in were always when they didn't listen to their own inner voice. So, you know, really listen to that. Always pay attention to that because, you know, it's part of your responsibility is being a sexually responsible adult and it's also a big part of understanding that you are responsible for the quality you're bringing into your life so do what you can to make that quality as best as it can also make sure this is somebody you feel open to communicating with and that you can trust because you know that's one of the most intimate things we are able to do sex is one of the most intimate times you can have in your life where you're really putting yourself in the hands of another person. Most importantly, you know, enjoy your moments. If you can actually have a conversation with the person that you're with, then that could open itself up to really amazing things. That trust allows for much more exploration and much more intrigue and much more interest happening in those moments that you're both together. So anyways, I hope that this video has given you a lot of food for thought and if you liked it please feel free to like this video please feel free to share it with the people around you and please feel free to leave your questions and comments in the comment section below and please subscribe to this channel i put out a new video every week on a thursday or friday and it's always related to tantra sex intimacy dating relationship tips i also talk about new tech trends that are affecting the way we date and communicate and connect intimately and i also talk about art every now and again because as i said before sexual energy and creative energy are one the same. They're basically life energy and it's what we need. So until next week, everybody, thank you so much once again and take care. And please subscribe to this channel. I put out a new video every week on Wednesday or Thursday. Let's check the marbles.